Okay, we're recording. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back with Ooh. Ooh, back with Billy, Anxiety United. Bad guy. In the UK. Yes. yes it's a bad anxiety guy. 101. The king, the king of Anxiety 101. I like your scarf, dude. Thanks, man. You're looking good. Snoo- it's a snood. It's a snood. Is that yeah. Is that what we call a scarf in the UK, or is that like a brand well, name? Well, it's, it's like a loop. It's, it's a not loop. a scarf where it's just open-ended. This is like a loop, a big loop thing. Ah, okay. It's technical, mate. It is very technical. It's very fashionable. Next up, well, skinny jeans and a man bun. <laughs> yes. Do you have man buns over there? Yeah, but Can I, I, ain't, got the man I bun? ain't got enough hair. <laughs> Why do you think I wear a freaking hat? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Skinny jeans and the man bun. Oh, yes. Yes. When you come over here, we'll go to we'll hang out in Brooklyn, and that's all you're going to see. No, really? Skinny jeans, hipsters with skinny jeans and man buns. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's a good deal. I've got, I've, I have got a pair of skinny jeans. All right. But they're too, too skinny. I have a pair of skinny jeans, but they actually belong to a woman. So, no, I'm kidding. Ah. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're watching us and you're wearing skinny jeans or you have a man bun, sorry. Didn't mean to insult you. Yeah, apologies for that. Apologies. If, to- I, had, if I had enough hair, <laughs> I would join you. Apologies to the skinny jeans crowd. So, <laughs> we didn't we didn't record last week. Um, so, we, we skipped Why? a week. Why didn't we? Why, Why didn't, didn't we record? We're just fed up with this whole thing. Yeah. Tired of you people, and you're going to hear about yeah. it today. Complaining. Uh, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no. We had, Billy had a, I had a bad back. Bad back. I woke up. It was, what is it, a week ago? It's a week yeah. today, isn't it? Yeah, it was a week today, yeah. Yeah, last Thursday, I got up. Everything was fine. Came downstairs, just felt normal, no issues. I was making a drink, filling the kettle, and all of a sudden my back just something happened. I don't know, froze. I could not move. So I was just stood in the kitchen and I couldn't breathe properly. It was making me panic because every time I breathed, it was obviously stretching. Yeah. And it was just bad. And like for a couple of hours, it was bad. I was I was on the brink of panic for probably two, three hours, oh, just, and I just lay in bed and didn't move. And then I came, sat downstairs, and sat on the sofa for like three, four hours. So it was like a PS4 gamer's dream. Yeah. That was my excuse anyway. We'll have to try and find a comfortable position to sit in where it doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, try not to move or move as little as possible. But then by the end of the day, it had eased a bit. And then the next evening, it had eased even more. more. Yeah. And now, now it's just normal. But I couldn't sit in this chair. That was the whole reason we were talking about that then. Yeah, yeah. The I podcast. It, yeah. I didn't want to sit here and do a podcast that and happens. just be constantly thinking about, yeah. ouch. Yeah, ouch. So, yeah. Yeah, no problem. You just sit there. I'll talk so you don't have to breathe. Yeah, well, that's what usually happens. <laughs> you just sit there. I talk. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> anyway, so we're back. We skipped a week. Sorry about that. Um, we Honestly, we're, I think we we're talking about social media today. We are. Let's talk about social media because <clears throat> it's um excuse me. <clears throat> it's actually a pretty impactful thing for people in our situation, I think. And if you think about how like if you were dealing with this sort of stuff twenty five years ago. Yeah, yeah. What did you do? The, you know, how did you communicate with other people? Where did you, yeah, you yeah. Infor- where'd you get your information, good or bad, you know? Mm. Mm. So it, it's uh, social media and the internet and that sort of stuff had a has had a huge, huge, huge impact, I think, on the way that these disorders have been approached. I said to you just before we went live, the internet has pretty much ruined my life you, now. You did say that's a, that is a strong statement, young man. Why don't yeah, you explain that? Yeah. Well, it's just you can get everything. You can get you can order takeaways. You can order taxis if you need to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can watch movies. You can talk to your friends. You can talk to imaginary friends, bots, if you want. <laughs> you can watch videos. You can do whatever the hell you want. You can all order freaking groceries off Amazon now. They've just introduced that here in the UK, pantry. Yeah. So, you know, what's the point? Why do we need to go out? You don't. I'm just go- For Christmas, I'm getting the PlayStation VR, and yep. that is it. And that's it. You're just going to sit. Bad back or not. I'm sit done. on the sofa, and that's it. Hell yeah. There's no reason not to. I can go bowling in my lounge. <laughs> I've resigned to the fact. I, I've been bowling. So, we had uh, a couple of years ago with the kids the Wii. Wii uh, bowling, yeah. Wii bowling. I, bo- I bowled yeah. in my living room. Yeah, sure. I haven't yeah, done it in yeah. a long time, but mm. um, it's true. So I think there's there's a couple of different things that's happened in terms of not just social media, but the internet in general. Like, has it made, if, if you're in a situation where you're avoiding, and I, I know we're kind of ex- expressly talking about like things like agoraphobia. People have a hard time leaving the house or just mm. being out, out in social situations and that sort of thing 
has it been the internet, not necessarily social media. Social media is a way to communicate with people, of course. But mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you said, you, at this point, you can have your food delivered. You can have almost anything delivered. You don't, you know, it, the reasons to have to leave the house are are getting working from home, telecommuting. Yeah. You know, many more positions where you can work from home because you're you don't you, you could still you could be in the office. Somebody dials the office. You could be extension 17 on a beach. You don't have to be sitting yeah. in the office anymore. So, yeah, yeah. I said to you before we before we started like that, like even with the exposure stuff and that, I'm finding it really hard to find things that I want to go and do. Right. So the only thing that I really want to go and do and that's been that I've not done for, I don't know, probably two, three years is gone and watch my daughter dance. Sure. And, and that's the only thing that I really want to do. It makes me feel guilty when I don't. I'm missing out on, you know, the progress that she's making and that. Right. But the only opportunity I'm going to get to do that is like probably March next year now. So I'm finding it difficult to uh, – it's not about the courage. It's not about – it's just like I I don't want to go bowling. I don't want to right. walk up and down the high street at the moment. Like I've been out a couple of times this week and this morning, and we'll talk about that in a bit, and my experience yesterday going for breakfast and that. But it's it's just like I'm finding it difficult. I'm happy at the moment. I'm happy working. I'm working hard at home. Yeah. I'm going out when I need to. I take my son to college three times a week now. You know, that's a 15 – minute maybe 20 minute journey there 10 mile you know and i'm not yeah. feeling any anxiety about any of the stuff I'm, I'm getting the normal levels like i don't mean normal as in high right that's abnormal right 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 I'm, I'm just getting like that underlying the thoughts and that and that's all i'm experiencing at the moment regardless of what i'm doing although i haven't pushed myself to walk around walmart but yeah. i don't want to at the moment I don't know whether that's... No, well, if you don't not have a, good a reason thing, to... Yeah, that's it. When right. I can order it offline and it's more convenient, Absolutely. I feel like, you know, it's a real difficult balance to find. You've got to find the time to do it. You've got to need the motivation to do it. Plus, you know that you're going to feel freaky when you go and do it. When you can just go on the freaking internet, and press it, a few buttons. And it shows up. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I think... It's difficult convenience matters in a lot mm-hmm. of ways right mm-hmm. so there are many things that i buy online that i could you know i'm out on the road i could stop you know and sometimes yeah, yeah. for me sometimes it's that thing well i'd like to support a local shop if i could like the mom and mm-hmm. pop shop but it's just so easy to just click a couple of or on my phone like i'm just gonna eh, yeah, what do yeah. i need i just click a couple of things on the phone and boom a day or two later stuff just shows yeah, yeah. up so and so you, you know like you get you so many things freaking drive through now as well. Like we got drive through Starbucks here now. Mm-hmm. Like, I do too. <laughs> yeah. I did not drive through to get this, by the way. I did get ah, it. Ah, good. Yes. <laughs> good. Well, only because that Starbucks does not have a drive through, but otherwise, I probably would have. <laughs> I was going to say, would you have dri- driven through? I have you driven through a Starbucks. I'm not. I don't really do Starbucks that much, but if yeah, sure. I'm a. I'm a. Yeah. You know what? I'm impatient. I'm a convenience guy. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah every, would... every bit, it's a high, fast-paced world now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I would totally. Everything... Any, anything that's faster, I'll take in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. so I get that. So in some ways, for folks like us, the internet has been a boon, but it, in the same way, it's been a little bit of an enabler. So we're talking about mm. practical things like getting groceries delivered online and buying things and shopping online and working. I mean, the job that you do, you know, being in the web design business, honestly, yeah, yeah. I guess anxiety or not, Many, many, many people. I would venture a guess and say that at least fifty percent of the people who are in that business work from home. I would say so. Why? You, you, there's no reason not to. In exactly. A way. So you don't need an office. You don't you need don't, an office. You don't need the overheads. No, no. It's, you're you're looking at it. There's the office. You're sitting in it right yeah, now. Yeah, so exactly. I, I think in a way that job you could be doing that business anywhere, and at home is just as likely as any other place. So I, you mm-hmm. can't even look at it as well. And, and, you know, we get asked this all the time, like, well, what kind of job or what business can I be in where I, I'm not, you know, I have to leave the house? Well, a lot yeah, of them yeah. now. And a lot yeah. of people do it not because they don't want to leave the house. They just. I was going to say, I mean, I've thought about getting natural, an office. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah. and my wife have spoke about it. Like, I should get an office. It'd help me. I'd be getting out. Yeah, yeah. But then I'd be worrying that I'm spending like three, four hundred freaking pound a month. Sure. On an office that is just pointless. It depends on what it is. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, we can talk about that for a second. Like, I could work. For a long time, we were virtualized, so mm. we didn't have an actual office for a while. We had the data center, but that's not people-friendly, so we wouldn't really be there unless you had to yeah, be there. Yeah. And, like, you know, when we had to get together, we would get together at a Starbucks or a Panera Bread or, you know, whatever. And, and that worked okay for a little while, but then it was like, yeah. eh, you know, 
we need a place to all be together. So, mm. but there are times, admittedly, where like no one's around. I got a guy away, or you know, whatever. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know there's nothing happening in the office. It's really easy to just kind of like hang out in my office at home, just because it's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. And mm. I can't tell you the number of people that I interact with on social media that have nothing to do with anxiety. Just their businesses, their writers, their everybody's a coach these days. It appears. Yeah. I mean, everybody's yeah. a mentor and a coach, but they're mm. they're coaches and writers and consultants and social media gurus and everybody's working from home and i see the post every day like yeah, yeah I, I managed to like take off my pajamas yeah. by two o'clock in the afternoon and everybody's <laughs> like making fun of themselves you know it's become a thing it's good it's, it's a progress thing. it's a thing and my, my sister tells me all the time like she you know like sure you just stop talking about how you're working so hard you're working in your pjs she she mm, tells me mm. that all the time <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so anyway I, I think there are practical things you can't always look at it as a, as like well i'm avoiding Mm. Whether you wanted to go out or not, if you, you know, your business could just, you could be working at home anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there are good things and there are bad things. Let's talk about like uh, interacting with other people. I was going to bring this up. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've, That's I've a different been a bit, animal too. I've been a bit quiet in the group, like the Facebook group. What's the link again, just in case? Oh, by the way, yes, the Facebook group. Look at the link in the description. I don't remember the. Bit yeah, yeah. I'm not going to put it on screen this time. It yeah. took me about three hours to render the video <laughs> just because of that. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So I, I've been a bit quiet on there, but I go through these phases, and I've spoke to Drew about it before, where I just feel like my whole entire existence is consumed by anxiety. So I'm in the groups. I'm looking at other people talking about it and watching their videos and I know that we talked about that being a good thing last week but yeah. sometimes I just get to the point where it's just too much and I have to sort of step back and I'm not even thinking about it like I'm not making my own videos and we didn't do the podcast last week and it's right. just it's been kind of refreshing to almost just do normal things like me and my daughter made pancakes at the weekend like that kind of stuff doesn't happen in this house yeah I don't I don't do stuff like that normally like I've been sitting, I've been having to go on the PlayStation whenever. I've had a few new jobs come in at work and stuff. And that's, like, I haven't had new jobs come in for months. But it feels like the more attention that I've put into that, like I'm reaping the benefits. I don't know whether it's, I don't know, the yeah. law of have attraction law or whatever. Of attraction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but sometimes I have to step back and I think that can possibly be detrimental with the social media stuff when you just get so consumed with it all. Maybe. Yes. I don't know. I don't know whether you've ever felt like that, where you've actually felt good and then you've gone into it a bit too much and it's just made you start feeling maybe some of the feelings and stuff. I, I know that um, my approach to social media might be a little bit different. I, lately, I've been a little bit more active in places like Facebook, but for business reasons yeah. more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what I hear people I'll, 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 here's how I'll answer this. What I hear people say a lot, and I don't, it's not restricted to people who are dealing with anxiety issues, but what I hear people talk about a whole lot is I, I have to step away from Facebook or Instagram or Twitter because it makes me feel bad. And just mm. just regular normal people who don't have anxiety issues say this kind of thing all the time. It makes me feel bad. And um, I think it, it makes people feel bad a lot of times because, you know, in many ways, like social media is like a highlight reel. <laughs> for people's lives obviously yeah there, there so, was one of the one of the creators of facebook was talking about this sort of stuff the other day saying that that's what they they prey on the fact that people want to yes reach the levels of all these other people that are showing this fantastic perfect life yeah and that's what facebook's about and and i think a lot of social media instagram and everything if you really look yeah, for a second yeah. and i've heard people say this i've never ha i've never experienced this myself and i think it just depends on the type of person you are but Social media sometimes makes people bad because you see all this amazing life that other people yeah, seem yeah. to be living, and it makes people mm. feel bad. And I think people in our situation are not immune to that also. I think if you if you were to watch somebody walk down a high street, like with the group maybe, yeah, and, and you see that and you see them doing well, sometimes there can be bitterness towards them because you can't do that. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that can have an effect. I'm not like that's not something I've ever I've always thought that it was brilliant to see right. somebody do that. But if there's people that really, you know, they're struggling to open the front door and they see somebody walking down the street, you know, it can have a negative effect, I guess. Exactly. So I don't know what have we created. It's it's such a strange <laughs> thing because, you know, on, on one side, we can get a bunch of people who are dealing with this, you know, together in one place and get in the group. It's awesome. I'll say it again. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, 
you know, and it's awesome because you get to root each other on and share stories and successes and give people give each other tips and pointers and and all the good things. Mm. But the, there are bad things, I guess, that can come along with that too. And I think so it could make you feel kind of bad when you see other people. And and so mm. all right, we're talking about our little maybe Facebook group, which is fine. But you know, then when you're out of that group and you're on the rest of Facebook, you're on Instagram, you whatever. Like how many. How many like heavily photoshopped and filtered selfies can you look at? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you know, how come everybody looks like they just walked out of a freaking magazine? And mm. I, you know, I look like this with this horrible light on my face and and the clouds and like you know, like this is real life. And yeah, yeah. If you're if you're so inclined, that can make you feel really bad in a lot of ways. But the good thing is you can communicate. But that's also that's a good thing. But it's also a bad thing. So if you're yeah. having a hard time, you have social anxiety, or you're having a hard time getting out and being around. Well, you can maintain relationships, and I think maybe seven, eight years ago, I would have said, you know, sort of relationships, but you know what? I've come to the realization that these could be real relationships. Yeah, yeah. I you know, so. I mean, you and I have never met, but I genuinely consider that you are a yeah, friend yeah. of mine, you know? I mean, we've not sat in the room together, but we do this, and... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Definitely. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. these are real relationships. You, you mm. know, you, people that I know, and you know, whatever, you guys are my friends, <laughs> like actual friends. I, I yeah, will say yeah. that now. Hundred percent. Yeah, but in the same vein, it's a negative because, well, maybe I don't have to go out or I don't have to confront my social yeah, anxiety. Yeah. I could just be friends online. Mm. So, mm. what do we, you know? What do you do with that? How do you deal with that? Uh, I think the pro- the problem is is that more and more people are doing that, aren't they? Like my my son on PlayStation, he's got friends in America. Yeah. Like, and he's desperate to go to come over to your yeah side of the pond, come you know, on. and meet up with his friends and that. But I'm sitting here thinking it's never going to happen. Like. I'd rather he made real friends and, right. you know, it might happen. I'd love it to happen for him. Yeah. But it's just like, let's be realistic. He hasn't got a job. He can't be asked to freaking brush his teeth half the time. He ain't going to be asked to get on a, <laughs> get on a plane. plane and fly yeah, to New York. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Find yeah. accommodation, get a job or whatever he sure, needs to do. It. Sure, pay for the ticket. You know, it's not Yeah, cheap. yeah. yeah. And I, what I think that's so funny, though, because for him and my kids, too, uh, you know, I have great kids, but. You know, so I, I was, my girls are 15, 17 and 15 as of this video, and yeah. they have grown up in a different situation. So you and I grew up where we, we had, you know, real friends. But that seems like a derogatory yeah, yeah. term. Like, I don't I don't mean to diminish the relationships people yeah, have yeah, online. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. But we didn't have those. I had actual friends. I, had to, I went out and played as a kid, and we, we hung yeah. out on the street and shot hoops and, you know, played football and did all the things that you did. And, and mm-hmm. now you don't have to do that. So my kids – yeah. yeah. They socialize in school and they socialize, you know, they run track and so they're friends with the kids on the track team and my other daughter is, is musical so she has her friends in the orchestra and that sort of stuff. But mm-hmm. most of their interaction happens, you know, here on these devices. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so, you've got to wonder what the future of like social anxiety because the numbers are increasing already. Yes. Like what's the next generation going to be like, you know, especially if the VR stuff takes off. I know. It's crazy, right? It's pretty scary when you think about it like that. I have a friend of mine who has spent a fair amount of time doing the VR thing like, um, what's the name of the thing? Second Life? Yeah. What was we talking about? Okay. <laughs> we had to stop the recording. Things get bad on the Skype call, so we're back. We were actually talking about... Uh, Second Life. Second Life. Like, so the, what, is, what is the internet going to do for people who have social anxiety? Anyway, mm. my, my friend is, was heavily involved in this thing called Second Life, and... I mean, it, it's literally like a, a. It's like people play Warcraft or the role playing games where you're living yeah, yeah, in yeah. this actual world or this universe. But it's not really that. You're just kind of interacting with other people who are inhabiting mm. that that world. It's it's fascinating to me. But I think that what is this going to do for people? With, uh, there, it's a double edged sword. So yeah, if you have social anxiety and you have a problem making relation or making connections with people in person, it makes you anxious. Well. The internet and social media is good because maybe you get to do that without having to confront your anxiety, which mm. we can argue is a good or bad thing. But you may be able to expand your social circles. But on the flip side, it's even more isolating in a way, I, I think. You know, I would I, agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and even for people who don't have social anxiety, I would bet that this will increase. If I had to roll the dice, I would say for people yeah. like my kids' generation, your, your son's generation – Social anxiety may be on the rise because if all you ever do is, is interact with your thumbs, you know, or, yeah, on, yeah. or through a phone screen or a computer or whatever the hell it is, when you get into real social situations, there's that awkwardness. You know, you I think so. You don't actually learn how to yeah, interact. Like my, yeah. son, my son's already like that. Like, he won't go in places. Like, we, we, we wanted a McDonald's the other night. We'd already eaten, and right. he was late home, and he wanted a McDonald's, so I took him. But I said if, like, the queue's crazy at the drive-thru, then you'll have to go in. 
and he was flapping about it and like he doesn't have anxiety sure it wasn't an anxiety issue doesn't matter it was just like it was more of a social issue like yeah. he didn't want to see somebody he knew well why surely you'd want to you know if you see someone you know you want to say hello i mean that's how i was before my own issues right I would right. rather go in there. I would want to run into one of my friends or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm. And I think mm. I don't know what that is. There's, um, I think when you communicate electronically, you're off the hook for a lot of things. The, yeah, you know the possible conflicts face to face could be uncomfortable, and feelings get taken out of the equation. But but then mm. on, so on the other side, then when you're face to face, you're confronted with all those things. And I know that for my kids, we've had a couple instances when the kids were younger, especially where I had to. Like I follow them on Instagram and all that stuff, and especially when they were younger at first getting into it, and they would mm. they would have conflicts with their friends, which is bound to happen. Yeah, and, yeah. and they would play them out online, and I had to stop. Like you can't. This is not where you do that. <laughs> yeah, my daughter is that. Yes, oh right. If you have a problem with this person, then you do not take it out on Instagram yeah. or Twitter or whatever. And everybody else gets involved. Exactly. And you you speak to them when you see them in school tomorrow, and you work it yeah. out face to face. And it might be uncomfortable for a couple of minutes, but that is how you do this. And really had to like drag them into that. Like you don't. Yeah, play, yeah. You don't do this. You think it's perhaps like you can hide your emotion behind Instagram, behind Facebook. Yes. If you're talking to people on headsets and stuff, yeah, they can't they can't see your reactions exactly. to stuff, and so that's what it's about. Is and then when you go and face them in the real world and they see, yeah, and you you can see them and the way they're reacting, and it's just yeah. completely different, perhaps, to what you expected, maybe. Uh, you know what? That's why I know we say all the time. I, the comment section is my favorite part of the internet. Yeah. And hang on. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> the comment section is my favorite part of the internet and because people are I – mean, sometimes it, it is my favorite part because discussion could be good. But, you know, mm. people who don't have to see reactions, who can be on phones and keyboards and behind screens, like you get really Keyboard brave. Warrior. Keyboard yeah, warriors. Yeah. You get really brave. And I think that silliness that we see in like we, people that we might call trolls and laugh about, mm -hmm. that's a – it does influence how you behave online. Like people will say stuff online that they would never say face to face. I know you yeah, will yeah. never say that to me, but you'll type mm. it to me. So have you been trolled? Have I been trolled? I have to say, I don't engage enough to probably be trolled. I will admit. I have. Yeah. I have in the past. You've been trolled. Yeah. And it really pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. I probably shouldn't admit that because people will probably do it. But yeah, <laughs> I have this thing. It just really, you know, when I, I've said to you, like, I've got two dislikes on a video. Yeah. So feel free to hit the dislike button if you want. But <laughs> it's like, that really gets my goat, man. The dislike. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We had... Um, if you don't like it, just fuck off. Don't watch it. I, that's my opinion. Sorry. You know, I, I, that's okay. I'm with you on that. Uh, I, I think for yeah. me... Let me think about this. How do I approach that? The trolling thing or getting... You know I'm getting trolled online. this week. You completely. We're going to be... The place will be rife with trolls now. I, I think... I, I don't care enough. I Maybe that's mm. – I hate to say that, but it's true. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I, with somebody that's going to express an opinion, you can express a different opinion to me. That's fine. And, and I might try to have a reasoned discussion with you. And I've gotten into mm. a few of those here and there on different topics. But in terms of trolling, I don't think I – maybe I just don't notice it because I don't care enough to notice or something. Yeah. But um, it was funny. I I, you, remember when I had my old channel because I had Billy Wiz. That was my yes. old YouTube channel. Yes, that's so what I, I meant. I deleted, I deleted that because of a troll. But it was it was actually a really positive thing because he was trolling saying like stop making the videos, just get out there and do this. And I I guess that I took his advice in the end. Yeah. I stopped I stopped making videos and just got out there in the end. And that was when I had my real growth spur, man. That was when I was out doing stuff. Yeah. So it kind of it did help. So it helped, way. yeah. You the, the yeah, troll yeah. actually helped you out. Mm, That's not a bad mm. thing. We had um I did one with uh a, a video with Holly over the weekend and one person we got a bunch of nice comments which we always do and one person commented that either me or Holly, I guess it was Holly I'm not sure like it was very distracting because we kept using the word like and right. and for that split second I want to say like this is this is what you bring to the discussion <laughs> like it disturbed you that she said the word like too much <laughs> so but and what's so funny about that is that's a discussion along the topics of what we're, we're talking about here yeah. I didn't get. I approve the comment. Fine, let the comment sit there. Somebody could jump mm -hmm. on them if they want. I'm not going. I don't care. But uh, I'm not going to disapprove the comment. It could. It could be there. It doesn't bother me. But that's a discussion that would probably never happen in real life. That person yeah. would never walk up to Holly and say, "You know, you say you like said, too much. It's yeah. very disturbing to too me. Much. It's very distracting." Would never say that. 
Uh, you know, <laughs> could you imagine what a ridiculous exchange that would be? So mm-hmm. I, I think there's so many different – there's so many – everything that we do online with social media and the internet, for people like us especially, is a plus and a minus. It could be enabling and it could make things worse for us. Or yeah, yeah. And used correctly or correctly. There's no correctly, but used judiciously. It could be a real benefit. Mm-hmm. So so how does it, like you, you said that if you get too deep, it just starts to become all consuming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it gets hard for you to disengage or are you getting trolled right now? <laughs> <laughs> no. My, son, my son's he's got a nip back. Now. He's got a nip, nip home and pick his bag up. So he's asking if we're doing a podcast because he oh. doesn't want to knock the door. Oh, that's so I. Right. I might have to pause you in a minute. That's fine. No okay. worries. That's so funny. Um, so when you say it gets yeah. all consuming, like you, it just it eats up too much of your time. Or <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is just this is real life. Like I said, it's a reality TV right here. This, this is it. This yeah, is it. This is I'm not being ignorant. If I'm looking down, I'm just. No, it's all right. You got to take care of what you got to take care of. My phone's ringing. You got your son coming home. It is what yeah. it is. People get to look in on all this. Oh so what becomes all-consuming about it? Why do you have to step away? I feel like I'm thinking about it too much, whether I'm thinking about what I can do to yeah. try and better myself or maybe thinking of what advice I could give or, you know? Yeah. It just feels like I'm constantly thinking about trying to resolve a situation, perhaps. You know, it's like with the exposure stuff. I'm trying to think of what it is that I could do Yeah. when I don't particularly want to do it. So it almost becomes forced. It be, I force myself to think about right. a situation that I really don't want to think about. That makes sense. That actually makes sense. Mm. I think um, all-consuming. The only time I think that it ever really became all-consuming for me, when I was going through the uh, situation where I had stopped taking the antidepressants 10 years ago yeah. or 12 years ago, and I got involved in a, in a forum of people who were in the similar situation, that became almost all-consuming. And it became, yeah. um, but it became a safe place. So I understand. Mm. Like for me, it became like a refuge. I could go there and interact with other people who understood and and see who was doing what and listen to their successes or or just bitch and moan if I had to. I guess. Yeah. And I can remember many times, like sitting at my computer, whether it was in my office or at my house or wherever I was, thinking, "What am I doing here?" Like mm. I would just keep going back over yeah, and yeah. over to the forum, keep going back. So. You know, and then you'd run out of new posts. So, like, mm-hmm. well, all right, there's been nothing new in the last eight minutes. So, I guess I'm yeah. gonna have to figure out some other way to occupy my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I guess it could be an escape for somebody. But, but then if it becomes like if it's driving too much, or it makes you think about your anxiety all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's where I find myself. Yeah, that's that's done in the past. Thing. Like when I first started my anxiety united stuff, yeah. I was actually in a I was in a really good place. Okay. And the reason the reason that I set the whole thing up was because I wanted to like you give something back. Sure. Because of all the help that we'd given each other, I wanted to try and offer that to someone else. Yeah, yeah. But all it really did was just brought it all back to my attention, and then I started noticing when I was feeling weird again. Yeah. And obviously, because I'm talking about anxiety all the time, that's what I'm putting everything down to. And then it just escalated and escalated. So, so becomes, that was a bad thing for me. Yeah. It puts your focus right on it. Yeah, yeah. So I think the best advice we could probably offer people in this situation is like we keep telling people join the Facebook group and get involved yeah. in the discussion. But don't spend too much time. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. You can't. I, and I think that's true. If you're going to move forward with this sort of stuff, you cannot let it become the only thing that you're thinking about all the time. Mm. Because that's part of the problem. When you're constantly focused inward, you know, things go badly. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in a way, you got to focus outward. And focusing outward on what other people are doing could be therapeutic and helping other people. But mm-hmm. you're still focused on the topic. You yeah, know? yeah. So even if you're, you know, join the group and get into discussion and share your exposure videos and do all that stuff. And then do something else. Join another group. Join another, right. If you can't get out, exactly, or or something, stamp collecting, or yes, yes, stamp collecting. Wow, I haven't heard that in a long time. I used to, I used to have a stamp collection when I was a kid. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) I used to smoke weed when I was a kid. That's how different we are. I mean, when I was—I tell you—I was—I was a kid. I was like—I was like sixth grade, which you may have been smoking weed in sixth grade. I, I, I can't say. I don't no, it's ju- a we, bit late than that. It's we don't judge late. here. It's a judgment-free zone. It's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So I—I I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I'm trying to keep us from just being. This is t- quickly turning into like a like a shock jock radio show. Um, 
So I, I think that the takeaway in the discussion here, and I guess we're not going to go for an hour today, which is fine, is use the internet, use social media for all the good that it can do for you. But I think you got to be aware of, of the potential negatives, which is mm. enabling the disorder, enabling avoidance, enabling social, you know, avoiding social situations. Don't let it be that. So let it be support. Let it be information. Oh, let's talk about information for a second because this is a huge pet Go peeve on. of mine. I'm going to wave my coffee stir at the camera. <laughs> this is how strongly I feel about this. My, I don't even know what this is. It's a snowman? I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes. So let's talk about information. So it's not just interacting with people or ordering dinner and having it delivered. There's yes. also a huge – it's anybody who can fog up a mirror. you got a pulse. You can publish something on the internet. There's no test. There's no competency yeah. test, yeah. right? So you can't drive a car unless you like prove to some municipal employee here that you know yeah, how to yeah. drive a car. But on the mm -hmm. internet, you could say anything you want. There's no license required, right? So – when you're doing your your research, and I'm going to put that in air quotes because it's it's a dubious distinction sometimes. When mm -hmm. you are searching for information, especially especially when you're in symptom mode, like let yeah, me yeah. let me Google racing heart. You know, okay, I, I think we can agree that there's some probably some fairly reputable sources that we can all agree are, are decent. So the mm -hmm. Mayo Clinic or WebMD, although I've seen some crackpot shit on WebMD, I ain't going to lie. Yeah, um, yeah. You have to consider, I think one of the, the most important things that you could do for anybody, whether you're dealing with anxiety issues or not, is learn to become a critical consumer of information. Mm -hmm. So let's be realistic here. And because I, I have seen the gamut in, in the 10, 12 years that I've been dealing with this stuff online of people who go looking for things that will help them or make them feel better. And some of the stuff that you come up with is completely and utterly insane with no basis in reality. Yeah. And, and look, I will tell you right off the top that I am – Firmly rooted in science. I believe that the scientific method got us out of the dark ages. And mm -hmm. this is how we stand on the shoulders of the people who have come before us. And so, yes, I am biased. I believe in the scientific method. It's slow. It's painful. It doesn't give us immediate results, but it works. Mm -hmm. So when you find some website from some dude who, I don't know, he's got a you know an honorary degree from from. Reiki University, you know, like, which is also some guy's basement. Like, you have to dig a little bit and find out what's going on. Well, but we, we got a certificate for that. I got a certificate for that. <sighs> right. And I think you have to understand, here's what kills me too. The lot, you understand the rules of logic and try and apply them. So I know what a straw man argument is, know what logical fallacies are, know what all these things, because they matter. When you're making decisions about your health and your recovery based on things that you read online, the biggest problem that I see, and, and feel free to chime in at any time here, because now I'm just ranting, is just, if you have, you have two, you got two guys in an argument, just because guy A is wrong, doesn't mean that guy B is right, they can both be wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They can both be wrong, and it's the single biggest pitfall I see everybody go into. Well, I tried this medication my doctor gave me, made me feel horrible, so therefore, all natural things are good. Yeah, It yeah. must be good because it grows on a tree. You know, like, well, that's wrong. It, the tree could be just as wrong as the pill that comes out of a lab. And who's the source? Not just Western medicine has things to sell. So do supplement companies, herb companies, food companies. Yep. Everybody has something to sell. Books, mm -hmm. coaching services, whatever it is. So you got to really be a critical consumer of information when you're doing your research to try to find things that will help you. I mentioned sort of something along the same lines. That's what we're talking about here in the video that I've just done today. So, right. like, you'll have seen it already, hopefully. Sure. When this goes out. But, like, the stuff that I've done in the past, like, tried exercising for a bit and healthy eating for a bit and getting more sleep and vitamin B here and there and doing a bit of yoga and stuff. Right. But what I find with that kind of stuff is that it works for a time, but it there seems to be a point where I'll have a setback and then, like... I'm back to square one, and then it's like, what was the point in taking 50 million magnesium supplements for the last 300 years? Right. You know? The only thing that seems to have, and this could all change tomorrow if I have a bad day, but like the drop in the caffeine thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm a real advocate for that because it's actually made a change in me. It's made me feel different. Yeah. And since then, like I have felt different. I'm not taking anything. Right. I've just taken something away that was perhaps adding to the way that I was feeling. Yeah. You know? And I, I think there's nothing wrong with that. If you find something that, that makes you healthier or makes your life better, that's great. There's, there's nothing yeah, I mean, ever you, wrong if, with that. If you've got a food intolerance or something and you stop 
eating that food, sure. you're going to feel better. You're going to yeah. feel better, right. And then those are real things. Those are absolutely real things. I'm not saying yeah, they're yeah. not real. I just... No, no, the... what we're, we're talking about taking or rubbing something on your skin or sniffing a lavender flower up your Right, or, or, or anything. You know? and, and, and some of those things, I don't going to say they're harmful. It doesn't hurt to try them, I guess. But sometimes I feel like it does hurt to try things when... When you are in a desperate mode and you keep trying different things based on what you read on the internet, and you're not mm. you're not you're not critically consuming that information, what's the source? Where did it come from? What's that person's agenda? What are they trying to sell? What axe yeah, yeah. do they have to grind? Mm. You know, and and so if you're going to keep jumping from remedy to remedy to remedy to remedy, you will that level of disheartenment will start to rise and you start to feel like you're in this endless pit that you can never get out of. Nothing mm. works. I've heard people say, "I've tried everything, and yeah, nothing yeah. Yeah. works." And so you just have to be careful because just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. I think um, you said you said a while back, like say if it's CBD CBD oil or something yeah. like that, and like you're relying on it, and when you haven't got it or you can't get hold of it, sure. and then it becomes an issue that sure. that has then become a, a safety behavior, hasn't it? It's become a crutch. It has, and that's it, not the idea. Or you can be masking your symptoms. So just the same way that antidepressants well, well we'll talk about this one day or i'll do a video on this but you know i spent nine years taking antidepressant i didn't have panic attacks but mm -hmm. it didn't fix anything so mm -hmm. it, it had a lot of side effects and there's always side effects with anything you put in your body whether it's natural or otherwise natural doesn't yeah. guarantee safe or or awesome yeah and it didn't do anything. It just masked my symptoms. So you can mask your symptoms all day long with CBD mm -hmm. oil or, or magnesium or whatever. You know, it can happen. But um, in the end, lasting improvement doesn't come from just masking your symptoms. It comes from learning to not care about them. And I, yeah, yeah. I will believe that wholeheartedly. That's why I'm here on video. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking. But I, I think more than anything else, I just have a problem with, and I hate to see people get suckered into bad information, spend money on things they don't need to spend money on things, and just just be discouraged more and more and more because I tried this, it didn't work. I tried this, it didn't work. I tried this, it didn't work. Well, you know, just see what's the source of this thing that you're trying. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing that I'll throw out before I stop my little mini rant here on being a critical consumer of information is common sense. And actually, there's a really good TED Talk on this. I'll mm -hmm. see if I can link it. Uh, and I think the title of the talk was Common Sense Isn't Always Common. Or does mm -hmm. it common sense doesn't always make sense? What we think is common sense is often wrong. Like our, our common sense is not a good argument for like what is valid. Well, that's mm -hmm. common sense. Well, common sense isn't always right because we common sense oversimplifies in many ways. There's tremendous amount of bias, experience bias that goes into common sense. And mm -hmm. the other thing that we wind up doing is we take overly simplistic approaches to things like anthropomorphizing bodily functions. My adrenal glands are tired. Like glands mm. don't get tired. They don't understand what tired is. Mm. Or the toxins are retreating deeper into my cells. Well, toxins don't know how to retreat. They're not afraid. They're either in okay. your cell or not in your cell. And is there even a toxin? And so I'll mm. throw this out there while I'm ranting. If, it, if, it's, if, the word detox, if the word detox is in the solution you're after, then run the other way. Save your mm -hmm. money. You know, so if you want to spend three weeks doing nothing but drinking juice, just that's fine. Just don't go far from a bathroom because that will be the effect. But you're not detoxing anything. Like our bodies have been built over a bet over millions of years of evolution to take care of their own crap. <laughs> Detox, there it goes. <laughs> so uh, now You're better already. Now I'm just ranting. Uh, I just hate to see people go down. No, it's interesting what you said though. Like alleys. To, to learn to drive, you have to prove yourself to right. a but qualified can, instructor. I can bang but anybody out. can. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I can write 2,000 words. We get done. I'm going to write 2,000 words in about 18 minutes because I'm a really fast writer. And we'll sell it for 69 On the most 99. ridiculous thing ever, I, I am going yeah. to come up with something. And, mm. and, it, and it'll sound good. I'll make it sound like it's really good, too. Mm. And you mm. know what? I'm not the only one that can do that. People do it all the time. Sometimes yeah, they yeah. do it because they're trying to swindle you, and sometimes they do it just because they truly believe it. You know? Mm. Mm. If you if you say it enough times, it's not a lie. So. How, to, how to effectively <laughs> destroy trolls. That can be the... Yes, or you know, fifty nine ninety nine. I'll write something e anxiety related, and I'm gonna I'm gonna attribute oh. anxiety to you know what the problem is? Scissors, dude. Scissors, cut and paper. It's the motion and the sound. It triggers. It, it, yeah. it messes with your GABA access in your brain. Mm. It does. I'm telling you. The toxins. The toxins just build up, build up when you cut paper. <laughs> Everybody knows this. <laughs> 
All right. Anyway, now I'm just yeah. getting stupid. So, so there you go. So, have we exhausted? Uh, this is so off the cuff. This is the most off the cuff one we've ever. Yeah, done. yeah. We've been random here. Easily, we had to stop in the middle. It's it's all good. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I need. Yeah. I needed this. I needed this in my life. It's just a little a little chat. That's all. That's what we're doing. I'm recording it. It was about the internet, weren't it? It was about. Uh, if you asked me, what did you podcast on today? I'm not sure I'd be able to tell somebody. The internet ruined yeah, my right, life, but social. you can watch this video on the internet. <laughs> oh, the irony! All right, well, we'll we'll have a better one next week. I'm sure we'll come up with a better topic next week than just watching us. Well, chat. I have. I've done my first like blog, uh, vlog in ages this week. Awesome. So. I will watch it when I don't we're know. done. Yeah, I don't know whether I'll start doing it again. I don't know. I said before we started that I'm just trying to enjoy my life at the minute. I'm yeah. trying not to make it all about recovery. I'm trying to not make it all about anxiety. It's, it's. I'm trying to do things that I'm enjoying that sure. make me smile, and that's hopefully going to have a crossover effect. It seems like it is because I've done more things like last time we did a podcast i was doing the hospital run with my dad yeah i remember because we haven't spoke since then have we and that went absolutely fine there was nothing there was loads of traffic at the hospital and i parked in a different car park right. like I, par I parked on a retail park but i was only there like 20 minutes and i started filming and i was sitting there talking and then like my dad rang and it was like oh it's over already there ain't no point in filming this nothing has happened nothing has happened yeah yeah that's good. We want nothing to happen. It is. It's good. It right. doesn't make good viewing, but I'd rather not have to make videos. Right. If I'm honest, I'd rather just get on with it. You know, that's probably fair. I think in the end, you know, it's all great to go out and, and film your exposure and share and everything, but the ultimate mm. goal is to not ever have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I will say, mm. as somebody who'd spent a lot of time doing that back in the day when we first met, I'm kind of happy that I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. That's the deal. More praise to you then for actually taking the time to, you know, you don't have to do this shit now. Oh, I like doing you this. choose. To, yeah, I know, but it's good. Yeah, because there's not not many people out there that they, you know, many people don't go back on forums when they're recovered. That's true. Know? That's true. We, we used share to their, say that all yeah, the time. Yeah. The antidepressant forum. We used to say that all the time. Nobody come. Only yeah. people only come on when they're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, because the people that have passed it are now past it. You the internet what? has no longer ruined their life. That's true. So I think, mm. yeah, for me, I don't know. It's just, there's a lot it's of good, crappy stuff. Because when day. I'm better, you won't see me. You're out. <laughs> 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 well, I will be gone. I'm nothing but dust <laughs> left behind. <laughs> Tumbleweeds. It'll be me talking to your to an empty chair. <laughs> if you turn, turn the camera a bit, I'll be outside Drew's window. There. I'm vaping. Just, yes. I'll be, I'll be Skyping with your empty chair and you'll be standing outside my window. <laughs> Va vaping. Very nice. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, we'll oh, be back wow. next week with hopefully something a little bit more cogent and coherent. But once in a while, yeah, we're going to do one of these where we just chat for a while. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's breath, a breath of fresh air. And and after all the, the griping about the internet that we did, I'll remind you to join the Facebook group because it's a good group. <laughs> yeah. we'll, put, we'll put the link in the video descriptions. And mm, yeah. I guess we're supposed to say, like the video, subscribe, share. Yeah, all that or stuff. you can dislike it if you want. You I don't. You want. Okay. I'm not going to let it bother me. Let's good. do a test. Nice. Let's go for 20 Let's dislikes. As many dislikes as we get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy goes off the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Ta-da. See ya.